this is uh, Raja Rao from Cloud Foundry Devolutions team and today I'm going to show you how to use MongoDB GridFS on Cloud Foundry. So in this example I'm going to show you how to upload an image file to MongoDB's GridFS and then how to retrieve it back from MongoDB GridFS and then display it in the browser. And in order to save the image file to MongoDB, first what we're going to do is to upload the file to a temporary folder and then up from there we are going to copy that file and move it into MongoDB. You can actually avoid writing to temporary folder and directly write to MongoDB using streams but I will cover that in a different video. Okay that brings us to demo. Uh, just so you know I'm using uh, Node 0.8 and also I'll be using Express 3.x module and MongoDB native module. Okay, I'm going to start with a boilerplate app. Uh, here I have imported Express and then also MongoDB. And this code connects to MongoDB here. And after that, I'm opening the connection. And my app is listening to port 3000. Okay, next what we are going to do is to provide a place for people to upload their image files. So to do that, I'm going to say app.use. I'm going to use a middleware called body parser. Then this is very important. I'm going to provide a variable called upload directory. Then to that, I'm going to say Okay, so what I'm saying here is uh, if someone uploads a file, then upload it to public slash uploads folder in the current directory, which means inside the application itself. This is important because most cloud services won't allow you to upload to any arbitrary folders. And when someone uploads a file, body parser intercepts that upload and then it automatically puts it into this public slash uploads for, uh, folder inside our app. Now let me switch to the front-end uh, client code a little bit so that I can show you how the upload is being happening. So I have taken the front-end code from tutorial Zion, which allows you to drag and drop a file and it will upload into, into any server that you want. Uh, you need some basic configurations like um, you need, we need to provide the field name of the upload and then what to what URL you want to upload it to. So now I'm just providing it as upload because this entire HTML is going to be running from the server itself. So it's, if you're running in Cloud Foundry, it's going to be like myapp.cloudfoundry.com slash upload. Now let's create a function that will receive this HTTP post and then push that file into MongoDB. Okay, so I'm going to create post Oh, just notice that the body parser should be express dot body parser. Now, because we are using body parser middleware here, by the time the control comes to this slash upload, you would already have the file uploaded to your server. So you can test it out by simply doing a console dot console dot dir request dot file start pick dot path and let's just say pick so this pick is the field name that that was passed into from here let me go back and see so this is the same as this okay let me push this to, to cloud foundry To bind to any services, yes. MongoDB. Okay, let's upload a file. Okay, so let's check it out.
So here you can see that the file is actually uploaded to my app, public uploads folder. This is the file name that body parts are gave, and this is the real file name. Okay, now let's write this file to MongoDB. Uh, now to do that, first of all, we need to create a grid store and then use grid store's write file method uh, in order to actually write it. Okay, so that grid store it takes the DB argument and the second parameter is new. This is the ID that you want MongoDB to use. This is the file name, and then you need to provide what kind of method, you know, is it a write or read? Uh, in our case, it is write. And finally, there is an optional argument uh, where you can provide the chunk size and metadata. So just so you know how you could do that. And you can also use metadata that you want to save in addition to just the file. To do that, you say metadata uh, metadata itself is an object, so you can do whatever JSON object you want to provide. So I'm just going to say username. So this is the metadata. Okay, so now you have a grid store that is ready to that can be used to write. Now let's use the grid store uh, write file method to actually write it. So the first parameter is the actual path which we get from uh, which, already know, which is uh, which is the path and the second parameter is the callback so let's create the callback if error Let's just say, see what happened. Let's just log whatever happened. All right, let's uh, try the whole thing again. Pushing the file again. Okay, let's check the logs again. Okay, here you can see that this portion is a log from MongoDB. Uh, so you can see that it gave a unique ID and this is the file name. And it also provides you some other data like a metadata here that we inserted earlier and also the MD5 information. Now let's see how to extract the file from MongoDB and then send it back to the browser. So this is a really simple HTTP GET method. It waits for any HTTP, HTTP GET for slash image and slash id where id is uh, the mongodb's object id and and then in these two lines i'm creating a a temporary file to write to inside slash public slash up, uploads uh, folder and then i'm creating a write stream and in these two lines i'm converting the id to mongodb's object id uh, and in this line, I'm creating a grid store with read access and opening that grid store so that I can get the reference to that object. And then I'm creating the read stream from grid store by calling grid store.stream. And this true means it's uh, auto close. And once I have read stream and write stream, all I'm doing is piping them, piping the read stream to the write stream. Whenever entire file is written, I am listening to the close event which will be called by the library and send the file back to the browser i have already pushed the code now let me copy the mongodb id of the file and i'm going to go here and then say image and give the file name you can see that file was streamed back to the browser now we can actually see if uh, the temporary file got created before it was sent to the browser by saying vmc files 
create a class um, then app slash public slash uploads folder so you can see that file actually exists okay that's pretty much it uh, hopefully this gave you an idea as to how to interact with uh, gridfs on cloud foundry and i will be doing another video that just uses streams instead of temporary files again my name is uh, raja rao thanks for watching